Hello everyone and welcome to this video, an introduction to exterior differentiation. Now in this video we look at exterior differentiation and how to take the exterior derivative of differential forms, specifically focusing on one forms and two forms. We'll also look at the general formula for the exterior derivative of a k-form, demonstrating the use of the wedge product and the anti-symmetry property throughout this video. Okay, so that's where we're heading, so let's make a start. All right, we'll perhaps hide that as well. All right, so exterior differentiation is a fundamental operation in differential geometry that extends the concept of differentiation to differential forms. Now, review of, uh, let's just review differential forms a bit, just go right back and uh, just a brief summary. So zero form, it's a function on a manifold M. We think of this as F is a function that maps the manifold to the reals. It's a mapping from the manifold to the reals or the space of zero forms written as capital lambda zero for zero forms of the manifold M. One form, a linear map that takes a vector and returns a number. Locally, it can be written as omega equals sigma i, omega i dxi, sum over i of omega i dxi, where omega i are functions on M. That's these parts here, the components. And, and, and we write this as omega is a map uh, from the tangent space of the manifold at the point P to the real numbers. So the space of one forms is written as, the space of one forms is written as the dual or cotangent space, the manifold at the point P, or we could write them as capital lambda one for one form of the manifold M. Now a K form is a completely anti-symmetric tensor that takes K vectors, just as one forms took a single vector, two forms take two vectors, three forms take three vectors, as you can see in the videos we've covered on this channel. So a completely anti-symmetric, uh, sorry, a k-form is a completely anti-symmetric tensor that takes k vectors and returns a number. Now in local coordinates, it can be written as, local coordinates on the manifold, it can be written as omega is sigma i1 to ik, k being the um, degree of the uh, form. And we have omega i1 to ik, dx i1, wedge, so on, so on, wedge, dx ik. All right, so that's a k-form. A two form will have two dx i1 wedge dx i2 okay three form three and so on all right now where omega i1 to ik are functions on m and the space of k forms is written as capital lambda k k forms of the manifold m all right exterior derivative and this is the subject of the video the heart of the video now so the exterior derivative D is an operator that maps K forms to K plus one forms. And we write this as D is an operator that maps the space of K forms on the manifold M to the space K plus one forms on the manifold M. Exterior derivative is the following key properties, right? Linearity, so the exterior derivative acting across the sum of two one forms, uh, two forms, sorry, not one form, sorry, sorry, sorry. Two forms, alpha, beta, um, K forms in this case, right? Then D alpha plus D beta, linearity. Leibniz rule, product rule, um, D acting on the wedge product of two K forms, alpha and beta, is D alpha wedge beta plus negative one to K alpha wedge D beta, right? Where alpha is a K form. Uh, nil potency, of course, is that D, D alpha is zero. All right. Um, Right, okay, uh, the minus one here coming from the anti symmetry property. Uh, look at that. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. I've moved, that's right. I haven't lost a page. I have to be careful now. I seem to click and lose a couple of pages, but anyway, back on task. Exterior derivative of form. So, the exterior derivative of a zero form for a function f, a zero form, the exterior derivative is the gradient of f, the f is sigma i, uh, partial f, partial x i, dx i. An exterior derivative of a one form for a one form omega is sigma omega is sigma i summing over i omega i dxi for a one form exterior derivative is d omega is sigma ij 
D oh, uh, partial omega i over partial xj, uh, dxj wedge dxi. And we can write that in another way, which I hope will become apparent later on. Hidden in here, you've got the anti-symmetry property, but so if we choose sigma, you can't have i and j equal to each other. And um, if you'd expand that out, i and j, let's say we we're talking about i and j going over um, uh, you know, dx, dy, let's say, so over two variables, so i is two, j is two. Well, when i and j are equal, you get zero anyway, so you can't have that, that doesn't, that doesn't work, so we don't need to expand that out. But when we expand our i less than j, so if i is one, j is two, when we do that, you'll see that um, dx one wedge dx two, okay, is just the negative of dx two wedge dx one. So uh, anti-symmetry property pops up here. So these are two equivalent ways of writing it. If you were to write this out, say for i and j equal to two, so one and two, uh, you'll find that you'll have dxi and dxi will be zero, dxj and dxj will be zero, okay? Um, and but with the wedge product where the indices are the same, uh, we get a zero result. Um, when you do that, and we'll do that later on in an example, and you'll see why we end up with these two terms and the minus in here. Anyway, so let's go through this in detail. So let's start with number one. Omega equals sigma i omega i dxi, where omega i are functions of the coordinates xi. Remember those local coordinates xi? All right. Uh, so that was number one. Now, number two, apply the exterior derivative d to omega, so d omega is d of this, okay, so using the linearity of the exterior derivative, d omega is the sum of the um, exterior derivatives of these one forms, just as up here, the that's equal to the exterior derivative of the sum of the one forms, all right? So the sum of the exterior derivatives of the one forms is the exterior derivative of the sum of the one forms, all right? or the sum of the exterior derivatives of the one forms. You get the idea anyway. Okay, so use the product rule um, or Leibniz rule for exterior derivatives. So d omega i dxi is d omega wedge dxi plus omega i d dxi. Well, you know what that is. We call it d dxi is zero. So d of omega i dxi is just d omega i wedge dxi. Okay, step number three. Step number four, express d omega i as the differential of function uh, omega i. So we have d omega i is sigma j d omega i dxj, a partial xj, sorry, partial omega i, partial xj. I've got in this habit of saying d is partial dxi. Substitute d omega i back into the expression for d omega i dxi. Okay, let's put that back in. Okay, so we have d omega i dxi is this here. Okay, we're getting closer. Now combine the terms for the exterior derivative d omega. So d omega is the sum over i, and in the parentheses the sum over j of this. Okay, and this can be written as uh, d omega is the sum over i comma j of this object here. Okay. Now reorganize the double sum. Notice that dxj wedge dxi is minus dxi wedge dxj and therefore we can combine the terms where i does not equal j so d omega is sigma i less than j partial omega i dxj minus partial omega j dxi dxi wedge dxj okay the terms vanish where i equals j because dxi wedge dxi is zero all right um Otherwise, if you just look at this, you might think, well, when you expand that out for i and j, you're going to have four terms. If if, if the limit is j is set to two, two dimensions, uh, what are you going to do then? Um, okay, and you'd find there'd be two dxj's wedged together and two dxi's wedged together. They would cancel out, leaving two terms. The two terms are in here. And the two terms are, you have dxj wedged dxi, and you notice that it's minus dxi wedge dxj. I think I might have a better example later on. Whoops. Okay, final expression, the omega is sigma ij of this. Okay, is i less than j, expanding that out. 
Let's have a look at some more examples. Now, a zero form. So let f be our function is x squared plus y squared plus z squared in R3. The exterior derivative df is just, well, it's going to be the gradient, isn't it? Gradient of f, df, uh, partial f, partial x, dx plus partial f, partial y dy, and so on. And doing all that, we get 2x dx, 2y dy, plus 2z dz. Uh, here, df represents the gradient of f. All right, let's have a look at a one form. Example, uh, let omega equals x dy minus y dx. The exterior derivative of the omega is, ta -da, let's have a look, ah, again, frustrating. The omega is dx dy minus y dx. Okay, so exterior derivative acting on all of that is the exterior derivative acting on each of the parts. dx dy minus dy dx. Now, we get from that dx wedge dy, so far so good, plus x d dy, well, we know what's going to happen there, minus dy wedge dx, minus y d dx, well, second and fourth terms are going to go to zero, so we're left with dx wedge dy minus dy wedge dx, okay? Now, dx wedge dy minus dy dx, let's tidy it up. Now, um, what we can do is that the anti-symmetry property here, because dy wedge dx is equal to minus dx wedge dy. The two negatives here give us a positive. So we end up with dx wedge dy plus dx wedge dy is 2 dx wedge dy. All right. This corresponds to the curl of a vector field in two space. Let's have a look now at two forms. Let omega be z dx wedge dy in R3 and the exterior derivative of the omega is ah, here's a bump to the good. Okay, so omega is z dx wedge dy. So act on both sides with the operator d. All right, we get dz wedge dx wedge dy plus z outside of d dx wedge dy. Okay, so what we have here is dz wedge dx wedge dy plus z d dx. We know what's going to happen there, wedge dy z dx wedge d dy and we know what's going to happen there so we come down here with dz wedge in parentheses dx wedge dy plus zero plus zero leaving dz wedge dx wedge dy and we can stop there because we have found we can drop the parentheses too we have found uh, what we're looking for but just as just for argument's sake just for a matter of interest let's take now what is dz? We saw earlier dz was just the differential. Remember the gradient of f? Remember df was the gradient of f? df was the gradient of f. So dz will be the gradient of z. So dz will be dz, the partial z over partial x dx plus partial z over partial y dy plus partial z over partial z dz. Let's substitute that in here. So we'll put that in here. Wedge in parentheses dx wedge dy. Okay, well, let's distributive law apply here. Partial z, partial x, dx, wedge with the material in the parentheses. Um, partial z, partial y, dy, wedge with parentheses. Uh, plus partial z on partial z, dz, wedge with what's in the parentheses. Well, here, dx, wedge, dx, well, that's going to be zero. dy, wedge, dy, well, that's going to be zero too. And we're just going to be left with partial z over partial z, dz, wedge with what's in the parentheses. Well, partial z over partial z is one, all right, by definition. So what we now have is the omega is dz wedge dx wedge dy, as, as we found up here. But just to show you consistency, putting in dz here, we can see that um, what we end up with. All right, uh, let's keep going. So the exterior derivative increases the degree of the form by one. Point I'm trying to make here. All right, now divergence. In three dimensions, the exterior derivative of a two form corresponds to the divergence of a vector field. Uh, and I'll pick all these up in later videos, but I'm just warning this is, this is where it's heading. Integration on manifolds, differential forms and their exterior derivatives are central to the theory of integration on manifolds. For example, Stokes' theorem, a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus, relates the integral of the exterior derivative of a differential form over a manifold to the integral of the form itself over the boundary. All right. So the integral over the manifold of the exterior derivative is equal to 
the integral of the of the form uh, over the boundary of the manifold. So this you know, this theorem unifies several classical results in vector calculus, such as divergence theorem and Green theorem. But it's a lovely compact way to express Stokes' theorem. Uh, the integral of the exterior derivative of a differential form over a manifold uh, is equal to the integral of the form itself over the boundary of the manifold. Beautiful, beautifully uh, compact notation expressing what's happening. All right, now let's just move that a bit there. Flow of vector field. So the exterior derivative captures the infinitesimal change in a differential form as you move along the flow of a vector field. And this is connect this connection is particularly evident in the context of Lie derivatives, which measures the change of a form omega along the flow of a, a vector field. This is the Lie derivative of a form. I do have an example of that um, in the, on the video entitled the Lie derivative, where near the end of that video I've done uh, a Lie derivative of a form, one form. Okay, now conclusion. Exterior differentiation is a powerful tool. Um, let's move that. All right. All right, so I'm back again. Exterior differentiation is a powerful tool in differential geometry that extends the concept of differentiation to forms of any degree. And through exterior differentiation, we can find concepts such as gradient, curl, and divergence in a unified and coordinate independent manner. All right, um, I think I've covered everything. And um, the, only, the only thing I might just say is, uh, just coming back here, remember I started out with the claim that uh, these, whoops, move out of the way, come on. Oh, I've lost it. Sorry about that. Here, this one here. All right. If you expand it out, just, so just take the two-dimensional case, and you can so say i goes up to two, j goes up to two. When you cancel it, uh, when you expand it out, you get four terms. Now, two of them will cancel out immediately because you have dx1 wedge dx1 and dx2 wedge dx2 goes to zero. When you do that, you're going to have a dx1 wedge dx2, and then you'll have a dx2 wedge dx1 which you can rewrite by putting the minus in front, making use of the anti-symmetry property, and that's how we end up with a minus here. All right. So if you take i less than j, expand this out, okay, i1, j can go one to two, you'll find this works out. All right, uh, j is two, sorry. So this, this will work out for you. Uh, um, and you can see both of these things that mean the same thing. I hope that's okay anyway. All right, so that takes us up here and we are finished.